Welcome to I Wet Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina, and in today's podcast episode, I'm talking to you, the one that is hustling to make event design your full-time business, the one that's thinking about it, or even you're someone that maybe is currently designing your friend's wedding and you're like, hmm, maybe this is the career move for me. I'm talking to you. I'm going to be discussing How do you go about navigating the emotions of getting started in the business, whether you want to be a designer, a planner, or maybe you want to do some freelance? This is for you. So when it comes to first starting and, you know, navigating the emotions, the first thing you want to think about is which direction is best for me to take in terms of what I'm doing. And some of the emotions that kind of happen in that first level of like, what am I doing? Should I do this? Could I? Should I? Would I, some of the different questions that we ask ourselves, is it like, can this be a full-time thing? Am I good enough to design, you know, my friend's wedding? Am I good enough to make this a full-time business? That's kind of like those like scared moments that hits us at the beginning. And I remember feeling like that at the beginning. I felt like, is everyone going to like my designs? Is this going to resonate is you know what I'm envisioning going to even come to a reality when I'm designing let's say someone's special day it was such a scary thought and feeling and the number one thing I look back on is I wish I would have started sooner and that's something I also hear a lot of different students say in the classes and maybe that's how you're feeling right now that maybe I should just start instead of just kind of thinking can I you know do this or not So that first level of emotions, you want to navigate through the fears and a good tip to get over that is by kind of listing out what is it that you want to do in terms of design or planning? Like, what is it that you're good at? Like, do you love just doing like florals or do you love just working, you know, with vendors? You know, you want to be more on the planning sector of it. Think of that first is listing out like those things that you love doing Because a lot of the times when we are in that first level of trying to figure out, can I do this full time? What happens is we forget about the passion and the motivation that it entails to be in the design world of, you know, of events. And we let fear kind of brew in. And remember that when you go over, you know, pursuing something that you're so passionate about, money will follow. And It is such a key factor, whether you're doing this part-time. And that is what a lot of people begin by doing. Like I did this part-time at the very beginning because to me it was about can I have enough money, you know, from doing these events to quit a, you know, my full-time job and really focus on just one thing. To me, it was kind of first like a little dabble, like a hobby. This is what I want to do, but I can't just quit and make, you know, full money off of it. So that's what I recommend doing is kind of first thinking about like listing. What is it that you love doing in that, you know, event design sector and put some focus on it and also think about I should just start with a little bit of events and you and that makes me question and ask all of you do you remember that first event feeling like that first butterfly emotion that you got of like oh my god I meant to do this and it usually starts sometimes with like of doing a friends or family's event like for me it was planning my sister's quinceanera I was so excited about it I was so nervous because my mother was like you're very talented I feel that you can do this go for it and I'm like oh my God, I don't know. I think she should just hire someone. I'm still learning the ropes. I'm like so scared. I was like, I know all about like styling, but can I really do this? Like, can I take this on? And I'm here to tell you, you absolutely can. And starting off with friends or family's events is the perfect way to get started and see if you can pursue this all the way through. So thinking back to those emotions, I was so excited of designing and I had everything so planned and I did so much research and I was so dedicated to just making sure this event was a pure success from, you know, 
getting the right vendors, working with the right vendors, designing everything from A to Z, thinking about every detail. And I was terrified, low key, thinking I'm going to completely mess up my sister's like birthday party. And I'm so glad that I kind of did not listen to that voice and I followed through and it actually turned out to be amazing because mind you, I had indoor fireworks. I had stilt walkers. I had like, I thought about all about the ambiance and to see it come to a like true success. I was like, I literally cried happy tears. If you resonate with those happy tears of your first event ever going successful, make sure to put that emoji down below because it is that like moment that you're just like, yes, this is confirmation that I'm meant to do this. So when you list out all the different things you want to pursue in design, it's important to get involved in designing a full event. Start with what, like I said, with the friends or families, like I had that moment with my sister's quinceañera. And from there I was able to see, okay, I need to do this as full time. Like this is going to be my career. What are the next steps to that? Because again, I, I had never felt that same type of emotion with any other type of career. I had never felt like that happy or excited. And it was just such a thrill that like, I, I think you, you all can see even like, you know, through this podcast, or if you're listening, how excited I feel. Cause I remember that first moment, I almost get emotional because it was that like confirmation that, you know, seal of approval, like you can do this after, you know, receiving all the compliments from everyone. They're like, wow, you did that. That's amazing. You should really think about doing this for your career. And then that took me to the second level, which I think about in navigating through the emotions of, you know, becoming an event designer or planner, which was, okay, I'm good at this. I can do this. Where do I start? So of course, which I always tell everyone, the second tip when it comes to navigating the emotions of starting in the business is finding the right education. To me, it's all about getting education. I wanted to know the facts. I also wanted to, you know, make sure to have the right certifications, the right information. So I can kind of have a roadmap because as I was listing out everything I wanted to do, and I was on the high of that first amazing real event that I did all on my own, I was like, oh my God, I need a roadmap. Like I need some type of structure and informational route that I feel like at times we're like, where do we start? Where do we begin? And for me, that was education that I knew in that moment I had to go, you know, find somewhere that would offer design classes, courses, anything like that to make sure that I had what was going on in the industry, like all the facts and also just more knowledge because knowledge breeds confidence and also knowledge is power at the end of the day. So as I'm looking at the different classes or courses that were going on, there was nothing really for event design. And that's why I think it's amazing that at the Institute of Wedding and Event Design, IWED, they have classes, core, you know, starter classes to those of you that are interested that really help you in getting like your feet wet to see if event design or planning is for you. And what's great is that in that starter bootcamp course, it's a low cost and it's perfect to see if like, is this the right move for me? You know, is this business like what I think it should be for me? And that's why I love that first starter course that you can absolutely take. Like I said, it is a low cost entry. So make sure to take advantage of that because that way you're able to see all the tools that are available to you in design and really kind of, you know, Take like a little appetizer of like if you want to continue getting different classes and things. So make sure to check out the Institute of Wedding and Event Design that has so many different classes. Not only am I the director of education there, but also with IWED, we really focus on hands-on learning so that we are able to gain confidence and also the roadmap that I so much wanted at that moment when I was starting in the event design career. So make sure to check it out. Now, as I found different classes, I actually had to take like ev like fashion design classes and courses like that, which I absolutely loved because I always knew I wanted to do fashion design and everything like that. But 
those classes still help because they were core elements of like business, design, and it really helped to see that it's not just creativity in navigating through the emotions of event, the event industry. It's also business. They go hand in hand. And I was always so focused on the creative part that I completely kind of like neglected the business part, which how many of you can resonate with that? Like you think about business and you're like, oh my God, that's so scary. Can I just find someone to take care of the business portion, like a business partner? Listen, I'm here to tell you, you can absolutely learn. I, when I was first starting, I remember I did not even charge well. After that first successful event and I was getting those core classes, I had no idea about the rest of the different elements involved in running your own event design business. Like, for example, the whole taxes and how to like, you know, make sure you have a certain portion set aside for that. I also did not know exactly what should be in the contract or you know what a proposal was per se, because I was so focused on the creative part. So making sure that you also are able to navigate through the business is ideal because creativity and the business go hand in hand together and they're crucial to being successful all the way through. So as you're navigating through the business portion of it, you have to make sure to stay organized because again, we're so, you know, when you're in the creative realm, you tend to get scared when you know you start talking about numbers or another thing is like not charging what you're worth or undercharging because you know you feel like I'm not good enough or you know I'm not there yet but you still have to charge you have to make sure to know your worth especially in design because you can't come out of pocket to create beautiful events for someone else. It's not fair to you and you're doing yourself a disservice. So that's very important as well to stay very focused on that as you're navigating through the event design business and making sure that you check your emotions as you're wanting to give your, your clients so much, but make sure that you're not over giving that you're losing sight of you making profit and to growing your business, which is so key. And I actually wanted to share some quotes that I have here, as you may know or not know, I absolutely love quotes. I feel like they really help uh, keep us focused. And I thought this was perfect, especially for this episode, which is all about navigating the emotions of running your own event business or starting an event business, because whether you do design or planning, it is a huge undertaking to think about just entering into a new field of work and possibly, you know, doing this, this part-time or even opening your business and quitting your job. So here's some different quotes that I feel like are perfect. So this one is from Cheryl Crow, which is nobody has a better vision of who you are than yourself. This is so important as you're starting into this business you have a better vision more than anyone else of what your future looks like, of what you want it to be. When you're starting your company, you know exactly more or less what you want your company to stand for, like who your you know client is, who your dream client is you have in your mind. That is so important. So that's why, again, either you write it down or put it into a mood board, whatever works for you. Remember that at the end of the day, no one has a better vision. So when you start getting those doubts of, oh, should I have like a business partner? You don't need to, to get started. And you absolutely have what it takes to run your business. So this was a good one. Oh my God, talk about another good one. So here we have Turn Your Wounds Into Wisdom by Oprah Winfrey. And this goes out to you, that person that has had so much doubt because maybe you haven't had support from your family, you know, in pursuing your dream. You haven't had support from your friends. They laugh it off and that, you know, you tell them that you want to open up your own business. Remember that those wounds, you're going to turn it into wisdom and grow from them. And remember that you have absolutely what it takes to pursue something all on your own. Yes, I'm not going to lie. If you have others who support you and uplift you, it, it does make the process a little bit of a less hurdle, but it doesn't mean that you need them 
in order to get started because you will find people along the way that are going to completely support your vision and your dream. So if you don't have it right now at the beginning as you're entering into this, you're going to be okay and you're going to find your people. Remember that. You're going to absolutely find your people. So that's a good one. So turn your wisdom into turn your uh, wounds into wisdom. Okay. Now this is, I think, the last one I'll share in terms of a quote. Every day of our lives, we are on the verge of making those slight changes that would make all the difference. And this is it says unknown, but um, I thought it was a great quote. So every day of our lives, we're on the verge of making slight changes. So those little slight changes that we make throughout the day are habits that we are working on building. And habits are so important as a business owner because that's what's going to help you stay on track. And there's good habits and bad habits. So make sure you're able to differentiate between the two because, again, as creatives, we're constantly trying to navigate our emotions because we can be all over the place. We could be hot mess express all the time. But remember that you absolutely need to stay very organized and have goals and know about like, you know, what needs to be taken care of because every day there might be new challenges as you're entering, let's say you're creating a beautiful event and the vendor ends up canceling on you last minute, which it does happen. It does tend to happen. I remember the first time that happened to me, I was like freaking out. But I remember I was like, I need to stay cool because I can't let everyone else know that I'm losing it on the inside. So you need to be able to remember that no matter what, the show must go on and that you need to start like taking actionable steps such as calling other vendors if let's say that vendor ends up canceling, like find someone else. So that's why it's important to do that prep work prior and start building those different connections and relationships, which is a big part of navigating the event design business world is creating those strong connections and vendor relationships and knowing who is available in your area. So it's not just enough to Google. I definitely recommend trying to get to know as many designers, uh, you know, event planners, just people in your industry, like catering managers, catering directors, DJs, get to know as many event industry pros as you can, because that will not only help you gain knowledge and confidence, but it will also help you grow in your business. Because when, let's say, a client goes and books that DJ or they go book, let's say, that catering company, they'll say, hey, do you know anyone in the area you know that does beautiful backdrops or that, you know, is able to design a very beautiful stage for my wedding. And they'll say, actually, yeah, I do know someone and they'll recommend you. So you definitely want to make sure that when you are building these connections, you are nurturing those connections as well, which is a big thing that you need to definitely focus on doing. And I think it's so great when you're first starting off and you take this as an advantage point. When you're first getting started in the industry, attending networking events should be a big focus because that way you're able to see like, do I want to get into like lighting? Do I want to get into draping? Who do I want to work with? Like who's who in the industry? Who, you know, who's going to be like my, like who are going to be my like, go-to people, you're kind of like are able to be like an outsider looking in and that way you're able to, you know, really analyze everything and see like what direction you want to take. And you'll know from attending so many different networking events, eventually like who you want to connect with and building those stronger relationships that will be everlasting that are so important for your business. So Take that as an advantage point. Like right now, let's say if you're just starting in the business and you're scared and or maybe you're working a full time job and you do this on the weekends, make it a priority to start attending different networking events and making connections and learning from people that are already working in the industry. You know, for every person that is out there that maybe is going to be rude or mean to you, there will also be another person that will be so sweet, embracing, that will almost be like a mentor for you in the industry. So make sure to take that into account as well.
As a designer and also as a future bride-to-be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one stop shop. Now, a big thing, which is a third tip when it comes to navigating in this business sector is being sure to walk the walk and talk the talk in your social platforms. That means that on your social media, whether you're new, whether you're starting off, and if you're not comfortable with social media, start learning how to use social media so when you do launch your business you're able to feel more confident in what you're doing because it is so important a instagram or a tiktok or a facebook are basically like your business portfolio gallery that's where people are going to go look at work like as soon as i'm at these networking events they're like oh what's your instagram and we interchange instagrams and i love it because we're able to put a picture like, like, you know, face to the actual contact now and are able to comment or heart or like each other's photos of our work. And the next thing you know, we're like bonding and then messaging. And the next thing you know, we're having a coffee and we're literally long lasting industry friends. And that's how I built a lot of connections from attending networking events. So make sure your social platforms are just active. You don't need to have tons of content, but have quality content. That means of, you know, centerpieces you did maybe for Thanksgiving, if you're first starting off, or maybe it's photos of what you did for Valentine's days of, you know, like a table setup. just make sure it's good quality photos. And a tip is when you're first starting, this is another advantage point. You're able to basically learn how to use social media, like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and then start publishing you know, once you have everything solidified in your business from like your logo and everything else like that, which I'll make sure to do an episode really soon about the core essentials to an event design business. So definitely stay tuned for that. But you want to make sure to just practice. And that's why it's great that when you're in that kind of like transitioning stage of, you know, entering the business and you're navigating all these different emotions, I feel like we're so hard on ourselves. Instead of just kind of like, embracing these moments of like trial and error, we like freak out. And why? <laughs> Let's not freak out anymore and embrace those different trial and error moments because that's what's going to make you strong in the business and even teach you so much about running and operating your business and design. Because again, we're constantly working with so many clients, vendors, it's a very like face-to-face -face type of interaction when it comes to, you know, building a strong business. You know, as soon as you see, you know, a, a business, it's like, you know, the person who owns it, it's like they're one in the same. So use, you know, those, you know, turbulent moments or those like trying moments, like how I like to call them, as an opportunity to learn and grow instead of freaking out and thinking that, you know what, I'll start till I have everything together. Or, you know, I'll wait till next year, next year. And the next thing you know, four years pass by and you didn't do what you wanted to do. So just start now and, you know, navigate through those scary emotions that you're having. You know, the, the, you know what emotions I'm talking about? Like, you're like doubting yourself. You're not confident. You're... You're like, no, I, you know, money, I don't, I'll wait till I have all my money, you know, from this to pursue this. There's never a thing such as a perfect moment. Remember that there's no perfect moment. It's about just literally embracing now and making sure to take action, actionable steps. That's a big thing. So let's stop just beating ourselves up and let's navigate through those 
emotions that happen so often at the beginning as you're starting in this business and embrace all of it. So I hope you took some of these tips. Enjoy today's podcast episode and I will see you in the next podcast episode. And remember, you absolutely got this. You will navigate through these emotions. Like I said, you will navigate through these treacherous waters and you will come through and see a beautiful rainbow on the other end. So I'll see you all in the next podcast episode. Bye.